Church, amen. Church, amen again. Give God some praise. If God, he's been good to you, say amen one more time in the house of the Lord. Amen. We appreciate you all for sharing with us in our 2021 virtual homecoming celebration. We've had a great time in the Lord, and the Lord has showed up, and he has showed out. But today, y'all, is the Lord's day. And we ought to rejoice. Be glad therein. Joy is what we feel on the inside. But rejoicing is what shows up on the house. Just give God some crazy praise if he's been good to you. This is our virtual homecoming celebration. Our theme, be still and know that I am God. Amen. And we want to uh, take it out by giving praise to the almighty God and to his son and our savior, the Lord, our Lord and savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Praising the Lord and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. We're going to ask our minister of music, Brother Brian Malone, to come forth and direct our hearts in songs. Amen. Now, 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 we, we, we're, not enter, we're not here to entertain you this morning, and we're not here uh, to, to worship for you, but we're going to worship God together. Amen. If anybody got a reason to sing, we do. The people of God, we do. Amen. If anybody has a reason to sing, say now we do. You know that we do. Come on, say if anybody has a reason to sing, say we do. You know that we do. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Yeah, let's praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Well, if anybody has a reason to sing, say we do. You know that we do. Yes, if anybody a reason to sing, we do. You know we do. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Yeah, let's praise the Lord. Well, if anybody a message to give, the Church of Christ we do. If anybody a message to give, say we do, you know we do. Why don't you praise the Lord? Come on, let's praise the Lord. Yeah, let's praise the Lord. I need y'all to do something for me. Come on, it's mine. Yeah, a reason. Oh, we do, you know, we do. Come on, say if anybody a reason to smile. We, we, we do. Come on, let's praise the Lord. He's worthy. My God, he's. Yeah, let's.
Oh, get God some praise this morning. Yes, sir. This time we're going to have prayer. We're going to ask Brother Cedric McNeil from the Lucas Street Church of Christ in Athens, Alabama to direct our hearts in prayer. Brother Cedric McNeil. To the Almighty God, we approach thy throne with grace in our hearts. Thanking thee, Father, for those things which you have made available to us. Thanking thee for the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us. Thanking thee for the spirit that guides us. Thanking thee for the institution which was planted by thy son, the Church of Christ. Father, we pray that the things that we do will be as a sweet-smelling savor unto thee. Father, we pray that we carry out the mission that you've given us decently and in order. Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus and his sacrifice that gives us an opportunity to be reconciled with thee. Father, bless this congregation. Bless the efforts, Father, that they are making to serve thee in spirit and in truth. Father, we thank you for being a good God. We realize, Father, that you are terrible to those who don't obey you and who don't seek you according to your word. Father, we pray that we'll do those things necessary to make heaven our home. Father, we ask that you'll just be with this nation. So many fathers are separating themselves from you by their deeds. So many fathers have gone their own way to worship thee. But we want to do what is found in your word. Father, help us to live in the apostles' doctrine. Help us to do those things that were found written in your word. And Father, defeat us in those things which are contrary. Bless the manservant who will bring the word on this morning. We pray, Father, that it will prick our hearts, that it will cause us, Lord, to do great works in thy name, and that we will hear Jesus, that we will hear Christ and him crucified. Father, we pray for you to lead us and guide us through the days of our life. All these prayers we ask in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Are you ready for the word of God? Are you ready for the word of God? We have a great man of God that's coming before us to bless us with the word of God this morning. In the person of Brother Alvin Daniels, all the way from Florida, y'all. Hope, Hope Church of Christ, and we're glad to have him with us. He's going to bless us on tonight. Our theme, be still and know that I am God. Do you know who God is? Well, before he's finished, you're going to know who God is is so at this time without any further ado we give brother alden hall he's going to bless us with uh, a congregational medley we want y'all to share this with us brother alden hall and then after him brother alvin daniels everybody say amen hallelujah I won't 
want you to help me. Oh, I want you to help me. Oh, I want you to help me. I want you to help me on my way. Said I don't know how My God is gonna Well, and he did say when When he is gonna fix it One thing I know, I know I know God's gonna make a way for me Well, I know he's gonna uh, he's gonna, he's gonna try him, he will. I know we can, I know we can. You can't set a victory. Well, I said down through the years, I know the Lord's been good to me. Oh, down. I know the Lord's been hey, down through this year. The Lord's been a good, yeah. Said He's been a good, really been good to me. Everybody say. Sing amen in the kingdom, amen. Oh, amen, amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Surely we rise, we give God the honor, the praise, and all of the glory. For we realize, we recognize, and we even testify that God alone. I said God alone, Brother Malone, uh, is worthy to be praised. I have searched all over. I couldn't find nobody, nobody greater, nobody greater than our God. I'm pleased, I'm privileged, I'm humbled to be able to present uh, for this 2021 virtual homecoming uh, service. I am grateful, I am indebted, I'm thankful uh, for my good friend, my comrade uh, in the faith, Brother John Malone for reaching out to me and tagging me uh, to be um, the homecoming uh, speaker on this uh, year. And I count it not a small honor nor a small privilege to be able to present uh, even on uh, this platform. So John, I want to thank you. I appreciate you. appreciate your labor in the Lord at Southside Church of Christ and abroad. We appreciate the entirety of the Malone family. We appreciate what you do, how you do it, Church TV Network and all of the wonderful things. Uh, that you are doing for the body of Christ and for the kingdom of God. And thank you for multitasking and being such a, a great uh, blessing uh, to the length and the breadth of our great uh, brotherhood. And to all of those who have clicked and connected with us and those of you who are viewing even right now, thank you for allowing us and me to stream into your lives even right now. It is my hope, my trust, my prayer that God might use me uh, in a mighty, mighty way to stream in your life in such a way that you might be encouraged through this stream. You might be blessed uh, by this presentation and that you might be even uplifted. And I wanna thank God again for all of you. Thank you uh, for tuning in and we want you to share if you care because we care, that's why we share and we share because we care and don't keep it to yourself uh, because God has given us a platform whereby we can share with others uh, the good news of the gospel of Jesus the Christ. And who knows, it may be because you open the doors of your online church that somebody somewhere might be blessed by a word uh, from uh, the Lord. Uh, I want to share, um, because it has been uh, prescribed to me, uh, your, your, your theme for this uh, wonderful year, which has been uh, a very interesting year. It has been a very unique year, an unprecedented uh, year. 
and we are coming to you in an unprecedented way. And somebody said, well, there's a will, there is a way. And so we appreciate so very much the tenacity, uh, the resilience, and the faith of uh, John Malone and all of those who are working hand in hand and shoulder to shoulder with him that because of a pandemic, because of a coronavirus, uh, nothing, nothing uh, will stop us from doing God's will. Paul said it this way, nothing shall separate us from the love of God. And so we appreciate so very much the ingenuity and the creativity and that we're still able to come to you. I'm coming to you out of uh, Psalm 46. Psalm 46, you'll find Psalm 46 in the first volume uh, of the Psalms and the prescribed uh, text that has been given to me is Psalm 46 and verse number 10. And it is my lot, my labor to speak uh, thematically uh, to you from this particular thrust. And I believe that the architect of this particular homecoming had it in mind that uh, us as the people of God, that despite what is transpiring, what is happening right now, despite the vicissitudes of life that we are experiencing right now, uh, despite uh, those things that are happening beyond uh, our uh, human uh, control, we still need to know that God still sits high and that God still looks low. And that's the sentiment that arises from uh, your theme be still and know that I am God. So if you would and could rise to your feet, I'm going to read that one verse until you consecrate the hearing, uh, even right now. Psalm 46, and the verse is verse number uh, 10. If you have it, say amen. I heard you ready to read, say bless the word. I heard you again. The Bible reads like this, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted in uh, the earth. If you need a tag and a title for our Samani presentation, it would be Be Still and Know. Be Still and Know. You may be seated in the very presence of uh, the Lord. Brothers and sisters, ladies uh, and, and gentlemen, as we get at uh, this text uh, for your consecrated uh, consideration, I will have you first to know that this, uh, this text, this psalm, and particularly this verse, has become somewhat of a, a mainstay for the, for the people of God. Psalm 46 verse number 10 has become uh, an in vogue phrase uh, that we oftentimes leverage as a kind of encouragement, as an on spot encouragement to anybody that may be dealing with going through some things in, in life. It is one of those verses that, that uh, remains itched and stamped on the psyche of every bona fide child of God because in the very verse, in the statement, be still and know that I am God. It, it uh, provides for us really and truly everything that we need to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work uh, of the Lord. It is uh, that verse that offers us a paradigm by which to take in the experiences of life, the good, uh, the bad, uh, the ugly and even the indifference. Be still and know that I am God is uh, a verse uh, in a phrase that, that helps us to, to be able to, to be at peace 
with whatever may be tied. It helps us to, to be stable. It helps us, it helps us to look to the hills from which cometh our help because we know that our help comes from the Lord that made the heavens and even uh, the earth. The verse alone is enough uh, to keep any one of us rooted and grounded in God, rooted and grounded in our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. It is that verse that would insulate us and secure us from the external circumstances of life, no matter what they are, come hell or high water, be still and know that I am God. The verse alone is a very powerful verse, but brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, if you just give me a few moments, I will, I will show you uh, that the text and the verse is far more profound than, than some of us actually realize. Because if you see the power that is in this verse on the statement alone, be still and know that I am God, it would take it to a whole nother dimension, a whole nother level spiritually when we consider this verse in the context uh, that we find it in. It's Psalm 46. And it is verse number 10 that we want to particularize, but, but on our way to verse number 10, let me, let me help you understand the context uh, of the verse. Well, this psalm is one of those psalms that, that touch on a wide range of uh, uh, different categories of, of psalm. You know, the psalm is not one-dimensional. None of the psalms are one-dimensional. Some of them are worship psalms. Some of them are didactic psalms. They teach us uh, lessons about Almighty God. Some of the psalms are just historical. Some of the psalms convey for us, good God Almighty, the oral history of uh, the people of God. Some of the Psalms, uh, they represent prayer and supplication uh, to God. Some of the Psalms, they represent uh, a testimonial to God. Here's what God has done for me. He's brought me from a mighty, mighty long way. Some of the Psalms are, are just there to comfort us, to let us know that every little thing going to be uh, all right. Some of the Psalms are, are written for the purposes of our liturgy, our, our worship expression. But, but this particular Psalm is like no other Psalm. Why, Brother Dane? Because it touches on a wide range of different genres and different categories of psalm. Not only is this a, a psalm of comfort, but this is a psalm of liturgy. This is a psalm of, of worship. It tells us that we ought to bow down uh, before our Lord and our Savior Jesus the Christ. Not only that, but it is a uh, piece of literature that would capture the oral history of uh, the people of God so that they would not forget uh, the way that God uh, has brought them. They can look over the shoulder of their lives and they can say that God has been good to us down uh, through the years. My soul looked back and wonder uh, how uh, did I make it over. Not only that, uh, it, is, it is a didactic psalm. It is a psalm that is conveying to us, that's teaching us the theology uh, of God. We're going to learn something about who God is, what God is, and what God is capable of doing in, in all of our lives. It's didactic. It's teaching us uh, about uh, uh, the magnitude of God's power and even uh, his might. It is poetic. It is prayerful. It is one of those psalms that touch on a wide range of, of genres. But brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, what I want you to do is appreciate with me uh, the tapestry of this psalm. Because the psalm has been composed in a very a deliberate fashion. It's not a throw together psalm. They didn't just write stuff just to be writing. It has a kind of rhyme and reason. Good God Almighty, Brother John Malone, it has a kind of flow to it. 
is, is taking us to a place. It's, it's going to lead us to an unavoidable uh, conclusion. And if you're journeying with me down the psalm, you'll appreciate the psalm a whole lot more than you did uh, before. What's my, what's my title? Be still and know that he is almighty God. Well, the psalm uh, begins with a premise. What's the premise? That's, that's one thought that uh, that's going to carry us through the entirety of the psalm. It is the idea that is put forth that frames up the entirety uh, of the psalm. It is the idea that we're trying to prove to you. It is the unavoidable conclusion of the entirety of uh, uh, the psalm. It is the driving thought. Good God Almighty, uh, Brian Malone of uh, uh, the psalm. But Brother Daniels, what in the world is the premise? It's right there at, at verse number one because the Bible says to the chief musician for the sons of Korah. Uh, these are gifted, anointed uh, men and women of God that have been uh, endued and endowed by the power of God, by the spirit uh, of God to lead the people of God uh, in their worship and even in their praise. And this just happens to be one of the sons of Korah which is also a prophet of God that prophesied by virtue of his music. And the text says that this is a psalm of Alamoth. What's Alamoth? It is intended for the female uh, sopranos to carry this psalm. Bass, y'all can come on in if you want to. But the psalm and the song is going to be dominated by the soprano voices of uh, uh, the females. They're going to bless us because they're able to carry uh, this psalm with the intended meaning and the deliberacy that God intended for the psalm to be written and even produced and even perform. Here it is. What's the what's the premise thought right here? The premise thought is right here. God, good God Almighty, is our refuge. What else? And our strength. What else? A very present help when in the time of a trouble. Good God, it might have just done got good to me uh, already. Uh, verse number one sets the tone in the tenor for all uh, that is being said in this psalm. It's letting you know uh, in advance uh, what the meaning of this psalm is. What is the, the guiding thought? What is the thrust uh, of this psalm? The thrust of this psalm is that we need to know that God ain't just know anybody. But the God that we serve, he is our refuge. He is our, he is our hiding place. We, we got, I don't care what's happening in life. I don't care what's happening uh, in your life. And it don't matter what's happening in my life. God is our refuge. We got a place to go. And when you go where God is, you're going to be safe. Amen, somebody. It's like sliding in the home base. You see what I'm saying? And then the umpire's right there. He say you're safe. Why? Because you made it home. And God got a place for all of us to feel like we are right at home because when you're at home with God can't nobody do you like Jesus and can't nobody do you uh, like the Lord he says our God he is our refuge and he is our strength. I wish I had time to tell you that God give us the power that we need. God endues us and God uh, endows us with power and even strength. My strength ain't my strength. My strength came from God. Not only that, he says that our God uh, is our present help in the time of, of trouble. Good God about it. I might not even get out of verse number one. He says he is a present help. Y'all know what a present help is. That's a help right now. Not R-I-G-H-T. It's R-A-T. He is our help right now. Right when you need him. That's where God will show up and show up. He is a present help. What's another word for that? He is an instant help. You know how you add water to something because it's instant. All you got to do is call on his name and we serve an instant God. He is instant in our trouble. He is instant in our plight. He is instant in our problem. Do I have a witness right here? He is instant in the affairs of our life and that's the premise of the text. But I want to show you something. I want to show you something. Can I slow my roll and show you something right here? I ain't forgot my topic. 
Uh, be still and know. I, I know my topic, but I want you to see something in this passage. First, I want you to notice uh, the second person plural uh, of, of, of the passage. What's that, but Daniel? Well, when I was in school, you had kind of three different tenses. You had, you know, first person, second person, and third person. Second person is when one person was speaking to somebody else, talking to somebody else. And second person, a plural, is when one person was speaking on behalf of a group of individuals, one or more person. Second person plural. Notice that this text, the entirety of this passage, is written in second person plural. It's like the son of Korah. It's letting you know who God is and, and what God is. And he's speaking to the, the nation of Israel. And then by extension, he's uh, preaching to the kingdom uh, of God. He's, he's talking to the body of Christ. He's talking to the churches of Christ in second person plural. What is he saying? He's going to continue on that same thought. He ain't going to switch it up. He ain't going to change it up. He ain't going to flip flop. He, he's going to tell us all that God is and all that God has done for us. Uh, look at verse number two. Therefore, since he is our refuge, therefore, since he is our strength, and therefore, since he is our present help in a time of trouble, what's our response? He says, therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and, and though Good God Almighty. The mountains be carried into the midst uh, of the sea. Good God Almighty. Though uh, its waters roar and be troubled. Though the mountains shake with swelling. Good God Almighty. There is a river whose stream shall, shall make glad uh, the city uh, of God. The holy place of the tabernacle uh, of the most high. God, good God Almighty, is in the midst of her and she shall not good God Almighty, uh, be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. Uh, the nation uh, rage and the kingdoms were moved. He, he uttered his voice and the earth did uh, melt the Lord of hosts, good God Almighty, uh, is with us. The God uh, of Jacob is our uh, refuge. Come, behold, good God Almighty, uh, the works of the Lord who has made desolations uh, in the earth. He make war cease uh, to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow, good God Almighty, and cuts the spear uh, in two or in pieces, good God Almighty. You what you notice uh, about this text, brothers and sisters, he's talking about the might and the power of God in the midst of trouble. What the psalmist is saying is that uh, you, when, when trouble comes our way, when problems come our way, when predicaments come our way, when pandemics come our way, that's when our God will spring into action. He say, no matter what happens in life, when you're in God, every little thing is going to be all right. He's saying we shall not fear. And he uses uh, metaphors. He uses Old Testament Jewish iconography to convey uh, that even if the mountains move and if the mountains shake and though the sea roar, these are metaphors that mean that sometimes you have some insurmountable situation. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Uh, you got some stuff that you don't even know how to get over. You know what I'm talking about? You got some stuff that happens in life and you don't even know how to deal with it's a mountain it's it's too high uh, to get over it's too wide uh, to get around it's too big to go up under sometimes trouble comes uh, like a mountain but he said since God is our refuge since God is our strength and since God is a present help in a time of trouble it don't matter how many mountains come our way it don't matter how many seas we have to deal with what's the sea brother they ain't got to explain the sea well the sea cause sometimes it ain't the stuff that you got to get over 
uh, South Side. Come on, y'all. It ain't the stuff that you got to get over. You got to get over some stuff. You got to get over bad relationship. You got to get over money lack. You got to get over emotional issues and, and emotional problems. You got to get over some church pain. You got to get over some church problem. You got to get over some family dynamics. You got to get over some marital issues. You got to get over some children issues. You got to get over some people issues. You got to get over some spiritual issues. You got to get over some demonic issues. You got to get over some stuff. But not only that, he said there's some stuff that sometimes will overwhelm you. He called it a sea. There's, there's some sea action, you see, because the sea sometimes will roar on you. Sometimes water will come into your life. And sometimes trouble will just flow until you like I heard Job said in the long ago chapter 14 and verse number 1 man that is born of a woman is but a few days and they are full of trouble he's letting you know that sometimes trouble is up yonder and sometimes you're in trouble you're submerged in trouble you are overwhelmed by the trouble in your life but no matter how the trouble comes no matter how high the trouble is no matter how low the trouble is that God is your refuge God is your strength and he's your present help even in the time of trouble and child of God you ain't got nothing to fear when God is even on your side if God be fire good God Almighty who can be again I wish somebody would give God some glory right there y'all just watching me no y'all need to participate in this give God some glory we're gonna take a praise break a virtual praise break and I want y'all to lay on them keys and say God is a good God God is a merciful God God brought me through God brought me out and God brought me over send him some heart give him some computer love we're gonna take a praise break right here y'all give God some glory shut that internet down amen somebody text somebody tag somebody let them know how good God has been to you. But that's not all that the psalm said. And I want you to notice feature eyes on verse number 10. Because I'm about to sneak to my seat. I'm about to take my sanctified seat. But I can't take my sanctified seat till I give you the verse. What's the verse? The verse is verse number 10. And here it is. The verse says, Be still and know that I am God. Good God Almighty. Y'all ain't feeling this. Because y'all ain't following this. You can't feel it if you don't follow. Let me tell you something. What had happened in this text, and I told you that uh, the sons of Asaph, whoever wrote this psalm, whoever composed this psalm, whoever produced this psalm, and the people that were singing the psalm, they've been producing, they wrote it, and, and they have been singing it uh, in, in second person plural. Uh, he is, you know, our present help, our help uh, in, in, in a time uh, of trouble. Uh, therefore, we will not fear. Look at verse number three. Though the waters uh, roar and, and trouble come our way, we going to be all right. And he says, uh, verse number five, God is in the midst of her. She shall. Y'all see it? And the nation's rage, he's, he's, he's given an account, a historical account, second person plural. And verse number seven, the Lord of hosts is with us. Y'all see it, second person plural. He, he's with us, he's on that side. Uh, the God of Jacob is our uh, refuge, second person plural. Look at verse number eight, come behold the works of the Lord. Come on, let's serve him, let's, let's look at what he done did. Amen, somebody. Uh, who has made desolations in the earth? He makes wars to cease to the end of earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burned the chariots with fire. Second person plural. But when you get to verse number 10, God said, give me the mic. <laughs> God said, God said, God said, pass the mic. Good God Almighty. Because uh, that uh, y'all done said enough. Y'all got the song started. Y'all got worship started. I, I appreciate that. But God said, pass the mic. Notice the whole thing shift at verse number 10. Because at verse number 10, God get mic'd up. And when God get mic'd up, he say, let me get some of that. <laughs> he, say, he say, let me get some of that. At verse number 10, it's not second person plural no more. This ain't nobody talking about God. This ain't nobody giving their own account appraisal of God. This ain't nobody testifying 
about the goodness of God. God say, Pastor Mike, let me get me a piece. I got a bar. I want to drop at verse number 10. God said, be still. Good God Almighty. And know what God? That I am God. Good God Almighty. Y'all missing this thing. Y'all missing it. Y'all missing it. Somebody been talking about God. Somebody been lifting up the name of God. Somebody been, somebody been testifying. Somebody been telling the truth about God. And God just snuck in there and grabbed the mic. And he said, be still and know that I am God. I don't need you to talk for me no more. Let me brag on myself right here. And if you really want to know who I am, forget the songs of Korah. Forget the soprano singers. Forget the choir right now. Forget the song leader. If you want to hear from me, here you go. I wrote a song. You want to you hear about it? Here it goes. He said, be still and know that, that I am God. Good God, man. I don't think y'all get it. Let me close my Bible like I'm done. God snuck in there and said, give me the mic. He said, here's what you need to do. And just in case you ain't following the choir. And I know that some of y'all ain't singing with the choir. Some of y'all don't get it. Some of y'all don't dig it. Some of y'all, it don't resonate with some of y'all. But if you really want to know who I am, if you really want to know who I is, if you want to see my power, if you want to know my glory, he said, number one, be still. Number two, he says, and no. Number three, I am God. Let's do it in reverse. I am God. You need to know. And the only way for you to know is to be still. Because if you be still, then you can know that I am God. But you'll never know that I am God until you know that I'm God. And you'll never know that I'm God until you learn how to be still. But then can you give us a bit of no? Be still. Stand still and see the salvation of God. You got to learn how to trust in the Lord. You got to, you got to learn how to, how to lean on the Lord. You got to learn how to lay on the Lord. You got to learn how to put your faith in God. Good God Almighty. The word be still means to put your full weight on God. Don't, don't worry about standing on your own. Don't worry about trying to do it on your own. Don't worry. Don't fret. Don't be afraid. Don't be petrified. Put your trust in God. That's what he means by beast. Because you'll never know who God is until you learn how to be still. Even if you're weak, you can still be still. Paul said it like this in theological terms. He said, when I am weak, when I start to lean on God, then am I strong. Because when you lean on God in your weakness, that's when you can experience uh, the power uh, in the might of Almighty God. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, said the Lord. Number one, be still. Somebody say be still. Come on. Be still. Be still. Number two, and know. You see, some of y'all done inherited your, your faith. You done inherited your Christianity. You done got your stuff from grandma and, and granddaddy and them. You got stuff from the preacher, the elder, the deacons, the sisters in the church, uh-uh. He said, no, you need to know for yourself. Uh-uh. And you ain't getting no more cheat sheets. No more cheat sheets. You got to get this on your own. You got to, you got to know me for yourself. Amen. You got, you got to know me for real. I ain't talking about just uh, academically. Don't just read the Bible. You got to have a relationship with me. You got to have some experience with me. You got to, you got to walk with me. You got to talk. If you really want to know who I am, you got to be still and just know because you'll never know until you be still. And then he said that I. I am God. I'm, I'm the great I am. And you ain't going to ever know it until you know it. Understand what I'm saying? And you ain't going to know how much God he is and, until you need him as the God that he is. And, and to need him in the God as the God that he is, you got to have a circumstance by which you get to know God uh, as he is. And see, you can't call him Jehovah Jireh, the God that will supply your needs until you have a need to be met. He'll show up and show out, and he'll provide for every need that you have. And then you can say, Jehovah Jireh, 
He, he's the God that meet me at my knee, Philippians 4, 19. And I know that my God, I know, I know, I know, I know that my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches uh, in glory. You can't call him Jehovah Nisi unless you have a battle that you need God to fight for. He's your battle leg. He's your shield. He's your buckler. You know, he go to war. The battle ain't yours. The battle, good God Almighty, is uh, the Lord's. You don't know him. You don't know him as Jehovah Shalom until you have uh, some, some chaos in your life, until you have some confusion in your life, until you have some hell to break out in your life. And then when he show up and speak peace to you, he give you the peace that surpasses all understanding. Now you know him as Jehovah uh, Shalom. And it's not enough to quote the name. You got to know the name personally because they indicate, they convey, they infer a personal experience with God by which you know God for yourself. And no more getting your faith for somebody else. You got to know him for yourself. He says, and know that I am a God. And not only does it say, and, and know that I am God, he say, y'all need to exalt me. I, I will be exalted among the heathen. I'll be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. Go back to that second person. A plural again. The Lord is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. But I like that verse number 10. Because when God gets the mic, he steals the show. When he tells us, be still and know that I am God and child of God. If you don't know nothing else, you need to know that you serve an able God. A God that can do anything but fail now unto him. That is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. According to the power that worketh in us. What's the power? It is the power of God. And I hope just pray we said something along the way. During this 2021 virtual uh, homecoming service. That might help you push through to press through the issues and the problems and the vicissitudes of life. This pandemic ain't got nothing on God. God can handle pandemic. God can handle an epidemic. God can handle a presidemic. God can handle all of the demics. Amen, somebody. Nothing is too hard for God, but you got to be still. And you got to know that he is God. And maybe you just need prayer. And I don't know if I should be even extending the, uh, the saved temptation, but I'm extending it anyhow. If you need to be saved, you come by believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Faith come by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. And when you have trust and faith in God and what He did for you on the cross called a uh, Calvary, uh, that's all you need. You ain't got to work for no salvation. You work because you are saved, but you don't work to be saved because God didn't already did it. He completed the work on, on the cross called Calvary. It is finished, said Jesus uh, from the cross. And he said, I paid it even in full. And all you have to do is receive it right now by faith. Uh, repent. Uh, Luke 13, 3, I tell you, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Confess him to be the sweetest name on water tongue. Even right now, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Be willing to submit to water baptism. Go down the center. Come up a saint. Rise and walk in the newness uh, of life. Be thou faithful unto death. He'll give you a crown of life that fadeth not away. You'll be a member of the body of Christ, the one true church of the kingdom of God. Just work out your soul salvation with fear and trembling, understanding and knowing that once you have been cleansed and washed in the blood, you can go to the dry cleaner now. Because when you're in Christ Jesus, even if you fall and falter, if you be faithful and just to repent, he'll be faithful and just to repent. If you but ask God to forgive you, once you get washed, you go to the dry cleaners and you can get some dry cleaning every day, same day serving. You ain't got to wait till next week to get your sins forgiven. Amen, somebody, because if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away and behold, all things are become uh, uh, new. And if you're a child of God, you need some prayer. Somehow, some way you slipped, uh, you lost a few steps during the pandemic uh, and you faded away. You got disconnected. You fell off. You fell back. You fell down. Down, you fell around. Whatever the case might be, God is able to, you, to restore you even right now. So if you're staying subject to the Savior's invitation, uh, 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 Southside Church Christ will give you a way uh, to connect so that you can be baptized into Jesus Christ. But the rest of us, if you just need to repent, raise that right hand and say, I repent. And if you just need prayer, raise that same hand again and say, I just need some prayer. Let's go to our Father, even in prayer. Father God, 
<clears throat> it's in the name of Jesus that we now come. We lift holy hands. We declare, we decree that you're God beside you. There is no other. We thank you, Lord God, for uh, your purpose. We thank you for your power. We thank you for uh, your magnitude. We thank you for your might. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your word, your will, and even your way. We thank you for the son. We thank you for your salvation. We thank you, Father God, for being better to us than we know how to be to ourselves. And Father God, as we stretch our hands today, we want you to bless every single solitary person that connected on this afternoon. And I know that they are connected by the internet and by the Wi-Fi, but Father God, they also are connected by your spirit. And we would, Father God, that you move on them right now. Bless them with the blessings that they stand in need of, Father. Strengthen them where they are weak. Build them up on every leaning side, Father God. And do them and endow them with your strength and with your power and with your anointing and with your might, Father God. Carry them through. See them through, Father God. Give them the power to overcome whatever it is. Mountain or sea, Father God. Nothing is too hard for you. Connect us, Father God. Restore our souls and cause our cups to run over, Father God. And if you do these things for us and even more, we'll be careful, Father God, to give you the honor, to give you the praise, and give you all of the glory. This is our prayer. This is our plea. This is our petition. And we nail it to the cross and let all of God's people say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you, Southside. God bless you with this uh, 2021 virtual homecoming service. We hope just pray that you have had a wonderful time in the Lord, that your soul have been stirred, and that your spirit has been edified, and that you'll walk by faith and not even uh, by sight. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted in his sight, O oh Lord, my strength, and even my redeemer. God bless you. Miss Pa, may the Lord watch between us while we're absent one from the other is our prayer. God bless. Come to Jesus now. Jesus said, today you hear my voice, harden not your heart, he's begging you to come, oh come, he's calling for you, my friend, oh come. Since our last in-house homecoming celebration in 2019, we've lost a great man of God, our father in the gospel, our mentor and minister of this great congregation, the Southside Church of Christ, uh, in the person of Brother Freeman Malone, Jr. He is greatly and dearly missed, but his legacy lives on. His legacy of love and benevolence, his legacy of great fellowship, 
And last but not least, his great legacy of sound doctrine. And it's in this vein and in his name, beginning this year, 2021, and throughout the longevity of our homecoming celebration, we want to recognize and appreciate uh, and celebrate those hard-fighting soldiers, those warriors of the gospel of Jesus Christ, those that have been the gatekeepers of faith and the gatekeepers of the doctrine of Jesus Christ. This year, we present and bestow this honor upon none other than that great trumpeter of the gospel of Jesus Christ in the person of Dr. Eugene Lawton. Amen. And the award reads, the Freeman Malone Jr. Medal of Honor in Sound Doctrine, presented to Eugene Lawton for your excellence and continuance in sound doctrine, for your excellence and continuance in the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ and strengthening of the Lord's church and winning lost souls to Christ. May God bless you and keep you and your family and your ministry for years to come. Southside Church of Christ Homecoming 2021. Let's give it up for Brother Eugene Lawton. God made Abram a promise. He says, I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. Lord have mercy, good singing, good preaching. Have you been blessed this weekend by this virtual homecoming? Brother Daniels, thank you for that word of God. To all the ones that have worked tirelessly to put together the concert, pour your heart and soul out and sing praises unto God, we sure appreciate you. But I've been blessed and I know you've been blessed. And if you've been blessed, we ought to be like Abraham and be a blessing to the Southside Church of Christ. It's a lot of blood, a lot of sweat, and a lot of tears that goes into making this happen, and it sure ain't free. Amen. If you feel good, like I feel good, here's an opportunity for us to do some good. Allow God to make you a blessing. Check out the links on the screen and the description on how you can make your generous donation. May God bless you. No, no, no. Thank you everyone for supporting Brother Selwyn Conley. This fundraiser was started by my father, Brother Freeman Malone Jr. many years ago, and we are determined to keep this tradition alive. We met Brother Selwyn at our homecoming through Brother Sam Johnson a few years ago, and we have bonded ever since. We want you to keep praying for the man of God as he goes through his valley, and also the Russell Wood Church of Christ in Detroit, Michigan. Are y'all ready for this amount? First of all, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank God also. As of today, we have reached our goal in church. We have surpassed it. Praise God. We have reached a goal of $10,425. Come on, praise God, praise God. Come on. Let's praise Him today. Hey, Amen. What a blessing. What a blessing. Let's pray and thank God for blessing us to reach our goal and surpass it. Pray with me if you will. Then the Father, we thank you so much just for taking this time out to uh, look down um, and touch the life of Brother Selwyn Conley. God, we ask you to bless him. Bless his health. We pray that he'll be able to get his health and strength back once again, that he may be able to go forth and do great things. We ask you to please heal him of the sickness Stage four cancer. Yeah, God, we know we're asking a lot. We're asking big things of you. But we believe that we serve a big God who's able to take away any kind of illness that we might be confronted with. God, we ask you to heal his body in a very special way. And we pray that he'll be able to get back in that pulpit and preach the word of God. We ask you to just bless him and stand on your word and to lead your people in ways of righteousness. 
God, we thank you for everybody, everybody who have taken their money, who have been praying for this brother and have supported this cause. What a blessing. We pray that you bless each and every one of us. God, go with us as we continue to uh, strive to do your will. We ask you to continue to bless the Southside South Church of Christ homecoming and the spirit of it, that we'll be able to do the things that you will have us to do and that we'll reach people all over the world. God, just help us to be the Church of Christ that you will have us to be. Now go with us right now until we all meet again, Lord. And it's in Jesus' sweet name we ask it all. Amen. Amen. Hey, hey.